So the reason, the, next car. the reason we are actually here, the reason that I wanted to make this video is because of this car. So right. I'll let Jason take the stage again because he is the wealth of knowledge on these sort of vehicles. This is a one of four at the time, 1982 produced, RS 1700T, unbelievable, <laughs> right? So this vehicle now represents itself as one of one because this was a road car. So this was a vehicle you could have potentially had it have got to the Ford Motor Company production line, this is how it would have become. And it is just ridiculously different to anything else you've ever seen in the Mark III Escort RS lineup. Mm. Or for any Mark III Escort lineup for that matter. Yeah. So to me, it is the most exciting vehicle in the room mm -hmm. because you're not going to see another one. No. Nope. You'll, you'll see a rally car. We've all seen the one that goes to all the rally car shows and uh, four fare, etc. This is this one. Car, though, this, is... this one does not yes. leave the what? It does not go out. I've never miles. seen it out. <laughs> if I'm quite um, honest, the styling is just absolute madness. It has so Bonkers. much presence. Yeah, I mean, look at the spoiler and just the follow-on lines of it. He's, he's mad. Yeah. The bumpers. Come, we'll just show you around the back. I, I did get a bit of this earlier, but twin exhaust it's coming down. It is just. As I'll show you guys. We get on our knees. Yeah. Rear wheel drive. Rear wheel drive. And just look at this. And what people screws going down. What people don't really know about this car is that it was the predecessor to the RS200. So it has that BDT engine mm. that ended up in the 200. Right. And it's all the technology was devised in this car. It has an external wastegate setup. It has a massive turbocharger for its time. Mm. Um, I'm not sure we can pop the bonnet and show you guys that. No, I have done a bit of overlay anyway. Yeah, but we, yeah, it, 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 <coughs> but listen, this was a rally car for the road. This is the road car version. So like you would imagine our Escort Cosworths ended up being a vehicle you could expect from the showroom. That's mm. what this potentially could have been, but let's have a look inside it. Yeah, let's go inside this. So, um, love the colours We've been, here. We have asked and we're allowed to go in this, which is the main thing. Wide arches, even Mate, down to the doors are the wide. Seal. The seal, yeah. <laughs> we think we've got body kits on Series 1s. No, we don't. No, nah, that's like... So, there. contrasting Series 1 centred, but with a navy blue bolsters, yeah. with the and RS the embroidering, well. yeah. with a fishnet from a Mark II. That is a crisis of timelines yeah. all into one car. <laughs> it then has a blue carpet, a bottom blue dashboard, but... We don't need a radio in this car. We have actually got factory fitted I'll show dials. you this, yeah. The dials in there are actually factory in the centre. How the ridiculous the is that? With the tunnel, yeah, so the, the tunnel is so much higher here. And Mental. it was basically a coupe. It's two plus two. Two plus two. Because coupe. Of the tunnel, oh, they yeah. literally put a divider in the back. Yeah, look at that. So it's two plus two. So that's unheard of as well, having that rear seat like that. It's just, just, just mental. all bad yeah so up here is the fuel filler <laughs> yeah. obviously here it didn't work no longer no so, so they got relocated <laughs> yeah pot it up there we'll come around and show you guys the rest of it front arch is insane the wheels we all talk about the wheels they're actually stepped aren't they so they it's they come dish. out so much wider but than the original rs7 spoke design yeah the, the center is mad again factory forward caps and the wheel is the same you can almost see like where the wheel was just completely taken away and then replaced with that step. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's bonkers, it's crazy. absolutely bonkers. Uh, from bumper, it's we all just talk a about madness. the importance of Corellos on the front of Mark III Escorts, but it doesn't get any more important than it is on this vehicle. So when you're talking about Corello spotlights and the correct headlights, this is why. Because they were the lights that were meant for the Mark III Escort. There was no aftermarket yeah. business, and this represents Corello very, very importantly at the front as well. Obviously that has a six pattern headlight system on the front. It's gonna be bright, isn't it? Oh yeah, it's gonna be bright. Right. 
the so bonnet, got, I will say, look at these it, vents and everything inside so here. Before the regulations changed and you had to have a steel bonnet on a rally car, they were able to offer a composite bonnet which is how they've got the air cooling into inside here. Because oh. obviously, as we know, a Mark III RS Turbo is ventless. Mm. So the only way to do it was to put this boxy air intake design to then the front get some cooling into the vehicle. Yeah. Right. Now, the intercooler is right here be be behind this grill. So that is a purposeful air dam of air. And we'll show you inside the engine bay where everything is. Yeah. Oh my, it's so light. So light, yeah, I know. Mad. So. Look at that as an engine behold, bay in a Mark III. <laughs> a very, very expensive BD engine. Couple two. I'm going to say that's almost T4 sized. I don't, don't quote me. I'd need to have a look. But it's a very, very large compressor wheel sized turbo, this end. Mm. And then you've got external wastegate, a very cool forward part numbered intake. And then you've got this turbo crowned top um, inlet rail, and then you've got a Ford branded, quite large for the time, intercooler. Mm. The only thing I can see that relates to a Mark III Escort here is this, which is probably one of the nicest ones I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> and the distributor, uh, sorry, the coil pack, and the fuse box cover, which is mint, mm. uh, and the wiper motor. Other than that, everything else under here is completely different. Yeah. In every shape or form. I will point out these bits, the, the strut towers and how that is so different. Everything's it different. It couldn't be any more different if you tried to a no. you know a regular Mark III. That is just shows how much development went into this car to Absolutely. make it what it was. But literally still retains all of its original hosing from when it was new. Um, it's just something else, mate. I bonkers. Just, I just can't get home Absolutely bonkers. over the authenticity of this car and the fact that it is literally now one of one and we're here. Yeah, with it. and you're with it. It's, it, yeah, is, it's incredible. it is mind blowing to see this in person and spend some time with it. And then one of my favourite things is you can see the 80s technology for rallying is all here. So injection technology was obviously becoming a thing, moving away from, like, just remember, Mark II Escorts were all this. Mm. Carburetors, now we're talking of direct injection, turbocharging. Deal. This was a big deal mm. in the stepping stones towards modern day rallying, 100%. After this, we were able to go into the MSRT facility. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't video too much here, but between the facility and the trophy room was this. This is Colin McRae's 1999 Ford WRC rally car, rallied in the 1999 Safari Rally Kenya. A very iconic car, and unfortunately, I only got a little bit of time with this vehicle, but as you can see from these shots, what an unbelievable piece of history. Even down to the pieces on the walls, there's Colin with the Mark I Focus. And up on the wall was a Martini outfit that Colin would have used in the 1999-2002 Rally Series in this car. What an unbelievable piece of history literally sat in this small room. Was such a treat to see this and even up on the wall above the car just the heritage and magazine shots press shots from the era this is probably my favorite one of the car in the air there with the crowd around it next up was the trophy room something that i'd never thought i'd be able to see but the amount of trophies the amount of unbelievable pieces of history in this room is unbelievable again didn't get too much time in here but i had a really good look round and just trying to get to grips with the amount of wins and the places that they've won it is truly a sight to behold this room Coming out of the trophy room, there was a little Ford GT40, probably one of my favorite cars ever, sat up in one of the workshops that I was able to film. Back to the hotel though in the MSRT, and that's it for today's video. Thank you so much to MSRT for the tour. Thanks for watching.